Say it. Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. today lift your right hands to heaven let's pray together father we rejoice and we thank you for the privilege the opportunity we have to fellowship in the light of your word the entrance of your word give it light it give it understanding to the simple and so we decree that as your word comes with clarity your people are built up equipped edified sickness and disease totally terminated and we rejoice that by the end of this service jesus is glorified nobody lives here the same way they came Thank you for the blessing upon your word. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands. Let's release our feet together. So say these words. I am born of God. I am born of, God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. 
I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. We want to also welcome our social media community, everybody. We love you. We're glad you're here. And we want to welcome all of the Aquai Bomb State community connected by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquai Bomb, Union Yo FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. All over Aquai Bomb. We're so glad to welcome all of you. You want to do me a favor, make sure your loved ones are invited to be part of the service. If you have people that are sick in the hospitals, you have people that are sick at home, ask them to tune to this service because this is our week of the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. You want to get everybody you know who is sick connected to the service because Jesus wants everybody to be healed. Our social media community, if you have sick people, also get them to hook up to this service. And brothers and sisters on social media, always a joy to have all of you connected to the service like you've always done. Let's do it again today. Help me share the video, tag some people. Help me also invite some people to be part of the service. Put them on monogram, telegram, and WhatsApp group. It's going to be an exciting service this morning. Now, uh, um, last Sunday, Power City International Campuses was three years since we started campuses. Last Sunday. Uh, last Sunday was three years since we started campuses and it's just exciting to know what God is doing all over the world. I mean, we have campuses everywhere around the world. You know, um, I will have gone through a list. I asked them to give me a list of all our campuses and, the, you know, our pastors all over the world. The list is just endless. Campuses everywhere around the world with a lot of wonderful pastors. And you know what God has done for us is God has given us wonderful pastors who labor together with me all over the world. All our churches in America, all our churches in Canada, all our churches in the United Kingdom, all our churches in Europe, all our churches in Asia, we have churches in Japan, we have churches in Dubai, we have churches in Doha. I mean, hold on. We have churches in... Uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia. We have churches in South Africa, a number of campuses. We have churches in Ghana. We are starting some churches in Lome, Togo. We have churches in Liberia. I mean, all over the place. And there are a lot more, you know, there's an ongoing training of a number of people that are starting campuses. Maybe close to a hundred more new ones that will be starting any moment from now. I mean, um, yeah. And uh, we have wonderful pastors. I, I wouldn't be able to go through the list because the list is very long. But the pastor who coordinates all of our global churches is Pastor Matthew, who pastors our campus in Abuja. You know, we also have regional coordinators. Ambassador Andrew uh, coordinates all the churches in the UK and Europe. Uh, Pastor Gospel in Lagos pastors our Ikeja branch coordinates all the campuses in West Africa. We also have Brother Emmanuel Anyim, who coordinates all the campuses in Asia, which reaches, you know, all of Dubai, Doha, uh, Japan, and all of that. Then we also have uh, Pastor Brian in Canada, I mean, in U.S., who coordinates all our churches in Canada and the United States. I mean, you know, um, it's just amazing to know what God is doing. And all of these people whose names I'm calling, they're wonderful people, wonderful. We also have Brother K. Brother K is our pastor in Zambia. He coordinates all our churches in the South African region, all of that. Kenya, you know, we have churches in Kenya. Where, I mean, I can go on and on. I just, I'm just being careful so I don't leave anybody out. But, you know, all of these pastors are people whom Jesus called by himself, opened their heart to our ministry. They began to follow the teachings of God's word. And they started all our churches. Now, it will amaze you to know that many of them, I have not met them face to face. We only have met through the word of God. And they're doing ministry through the word of God. Isn't it a blessing? And then we have churches all over Nigeria. We have campuses in Abuja, you know, a number of them. We have campuses in Port Harcourt. We have campuses in uh, Lagos. We have campuses in, um, uh, uh, I mean, Lagos, a number of them. We have in Kefi, we have in Enugu. We have campuses in um, 
uh, Ibadan. We have campuses in, uh, I can go on and on. I mean, they're all over Nigeria. We have campuses everywhere. And it's just exciting. I'm taking this minutes to just acknowledge what God has done for us as a ministry in the past three years. Just three years. So imagine what God is going to be doing for us in another 10 years from now. It's exciting. So all, all our campus coordinators, all our campus pastors around the world, I salute all of you for your labor, your commitment, your sacrifice, your steadfastness. I want you to know we love you. We love all of you. We pray for you all the time. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you here in August homecoming. The first week of August will be homecoming. We want to see every one of you and all of our people around the world. It's exciting. We love you guys. And we continue to labor together. And I'm sure when we see Jesus, he will say to all of you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Are we excited this morning? Can we celebrate all of this with a shout and a clap this morning? <laughs> Glory! All right, are you ready for the word of God? All right, grab your paper, your, your notebook, your pen, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we examine the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. <clears throat> In the morning service, I laid a foundation today on this subject, and we began to look at quite a number of things in the first service. I will advise you to get the messages of the first service, get them online or get them on YouTube or get them on Instagram or of course you can also get them on, uh, you know, uh, on the CDs and all the materials that we're using, documenting and keeping our messages. But we're looking at healing. <clears throat> healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Jesus. Healing is a sign of the redemptive work of of Jesus. Healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Jesus. A sign that Jesus is our savior is that he heals our bodies. A sign that Jesus is our savior is that he heals our bodies. <clears throat> he heals our bodies. And what it means is that if I believe to be saved, I had to believe to be saved. I had to believe to be saved. Nobody gets saved on his own. Nobody gets saved because God wanted him to be saved. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 4. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Jesus came to save those who are lost. So even though salvation is the will of God, but a man will call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Romans chapter 10 verse number 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Next verse. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Next verse. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Next verse. Next verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So yes, God in the sacrifice of Jesus has made a provision for salvation. But nobody is saved just because Jesus died. Nobody is saved simply because Jesus died. People are saved because they believe in his death. People are saved because they believe in his death. Notice, people are not saved because they know it. People are not saved because they talk about it. Some, you know, some preachers even are not saved even though they are preaching. They are preaching Christ but they are not born again. 
Because I have done ministers conferences where after teaching properly, you see pastors coming out to the pulpit. In fact, sometimes you see bishops with their bishopric regalia coming out to the pulpit to be born again. Why? Because you are not saved just because you know it. You are not saved just because you preach it. God initiated salvation in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So, Jesus was delivered for our offenses. But a man is only saved when he calls on the name of Jesus. So, a man can be sick and he is saved and he has eternal life. And a man can be healed. But that man is not saved. That man is doomed to go to hell. So, looking at the order of priority, salvation is top priority. Salvation is top priority. Even though God initiates salvation, salvation still has to be believed and then received. It's not automatic. It has to be believed and then received. So, if salvation, which is initiated by God on his own, will demand that a man has to believe it. And here, believing is not mental ascent. Believing is not mental ascent because having a mental ascent, it says, I have seen it before. I know it. But are you sure it's for everybody? What about other religions? Do you mean God will condemn them? That person just has a mental ascent but has not believed the word to act on it. He could even tell somebody, you better receive God into your life. You better worship God. But ask him to act upon it, he will not do it. Because he has not been persuaded about what he has heard or what he knows. Mental assent will admire it. They talk about it, but never act on it. They admire it. They talk about it but never act on it. And until you act on God's word, you cannot derive the benefits of that word. So the first thing is to see healing as a sign of the redemption or the redemptive work of Christ. To see healing as a sign of the redemptive work of Jesus. Since we are all believers, let me assume that everybody here is a believer how did you get born again? You believed in your heart. You confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which means you acted on it. Then now you are saved. You go out and tell other people. So you acted on the world. How much less healing? If salvation, which is God's will for all men... If salvation, which is what Jesus died for primarily, if salvation is what God became a man to provide, it's not automatic on all men. A man has to hear, a man has to believe, a man has to receive and confess to be saved. How much less healing? Which means that healing, even though it's the will of God for people to be healed, is not automatic. Because if salvation, which is major, is not automatic, how much less healing? In Matthew chapter 8 verse 16, please pay attention. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. <clears throat> when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. He healed all that were sick. Next verse 17. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah as the prophet saying. Himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. There is therefore a relationship 
between Jesus bearing our sins, which he did on the cross to the throne, with Jesus healing our bodies. There is a relationship between Jesus bearing our sins and Jesus healing our bodies. I don't need more faith to be healed than I have already as a believer. The believer does not have a faith problem. The believer does not have a faith problem. All the faith that the believer needs for healing, he already has in salvation. He already has in salvation. So, I should be able to easily accept Jesus to heal my body. And if I accept him as my savior from sin, it is much more a sign that my sins are forgiven, therefore my body should be healed. My sins are forgiven is a guarantee that my body should be healed. Look at Matthew 11. When John the Baptist sent his disciples to go and ask if Jesus is the one or they should look for another, Jesus said, go and tell John, the blind receive their sight. The lame are walking. Deaf ears are unstopped. He was saying, tell John, if you want to know whether I am the one that will bear sins, this is the proof. The healing ministry of Jesus was a proof that Jesus will be the sin bearer. So if he bore our sins, it is evidence that he also provided for our healing. It is evidence that he also provided for our healing. Sicknesses are being healed. Jesus was talking to John. If you want to know if I am the one you prophesied about as the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world, then this is it. So therefore it means that I must, I must see bodily healing in relationship with salvation. I must see bodily healing in relationship with salvation. It is a sign of it. Bodily healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Christ. Bodily healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Christ. In Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Acts chapter 2 verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. In Acts 10, 38, Peter was preaching in Acts 10, 38 in the house of Cornelius and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. God is a good God. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. He went about doing good. Hallelujah. He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Part of the goodness of Jesus is to heal all, not some. Not some. His healing power is available for all. Whether they receive it or not, the power is available. And it doesn't matter how many people withdraw from the power, there is never a scarcity of power available. There's never a scarcity of power available, irrespective of how many people have withdrawn from that power. Why? He has made power available to take care of our bodies for time. All of our lifetime. He is a good God. He is a good God. I said he is a good God. I can know that scripture, Acts 10 38. I can quote it, but not act upon it. I can go around saying, God is a good God. He's a healer. He has healed. He, did, he still heals. He will still heal. And sickness can be killing me in my body. 
I'm busy preaching it to everybody, but me myself, I don't know how to receive for myself. So it's not enough to know what he does. It's not enough to know that he has made power available. You must go beyond that to act. Because it is in acting on the word, you take delivery of what the word offers. In acting upon the word, you take delivery of what the word offers. Your ability, your ability to minister healing or talk about it does not mean that you know how to receive. You can even pray for people and they are healed, but you yourself are sick. In fact, if you are not careful, you can be so sick after praying for the sick and they are healed and you die with sickness. So that you preach it and teach it does not automatically translate to you receiving it. His brother Copeland, I was watching him yesterday. I watched the whole service yesterday. He too was doing healing service yesterday. You know, and I was watching and I enjoyed it. His brother Copeland who said he was telling God, Oh God, you, you have not done this for me. You have not done that for me. You have not done that for me. I don't know why you have not done this for me. And God said to him, Stop blaming me for your failure to receive what I have provided. Stop blaming me for your failure to receive what I have provided. The provision has been made. The provision has been given to you without a condition. Now whether you receive it or not is no more God's problem. It's up to you. You can make up your mind right now. That pain in my body is not going home with me today. You can decide that and that will be the end of it. And also, you can sit here with a pain in your body and be saying, Jesus is good. He went about doing good. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you still go home with Jesus is good in your mouth, pain in your body. The choice is yours. Somebody said, well, you know, somebody commented yesterday on our adverts for, for, for healing service. He said, if, if you people really have the power like that, why don't you go everywhere healing people? Jesus didn't go everywhere healing people. The sick need the physician. It is the people that came to him and even when they came, he still asked them to do something. Jesus wasn't just healing around like that, No. And even before he healed, he taught. Everywhere Jesus healed, he will teach first. Because it is the teaching that will bring you to where you see what to do to take your healing. He didn't just say, you know, I'm Jesus, I am God. And you know, after all, I'm the creator of the world. Take your healing, take it, take it. Whether you like it or not, come here. Whether you like it or not, receive your sight. No, nobody does that. Even salvation is not by force. Salvation, we have to preach it. You have to receive it. You have to want it to have it. So if salvation, which is the major thing, you have to believe to receive, is it healing that will just be given to you just because God likes you? If there's anything God will force on people, it's not healing. It's salvation. Because that's why Jesus died. But even with that, you are not saved until you believe. And until you ask the Lord to come into your heart. I'm teaching good. We are not magicians. It's magicians that go around doing show. It's magicians that go around make, giving people what people never ask for. Because they are proving a point. God is not proving a point. God has no point to prove. We are not in display here. We are teaching people the word of God so they can rise up within the confines of God's word and take what is theirs as provided in God's word. Are you following here? Nekota huh. Kalia. Somebody said, I'm waiting to see the miracles. I said to him, it's not showmanship. We're not going to be displaying. We are teaching the word. Those who really need it will get it. It's as easy as that. Are you all following here? It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. 
Jesus never went anywhere and gathered people and said, come and tell us what happened to you. Come and give us testimony. There's no such thing in Jesus' ministry. Neither in Paul's ministry. Neither in Peter's ministry. It is not apostolic. However, people were being healed. Some of them came and told him and he told them, shh, tell nobody. Some of them, he told them, go and show yourself to the priest. Because it's not a show. We are helping people get out of pain. Pain is not for show. The reason why God heals is not to prove a point. It's because he loves you and he's not happy to see you privately in pain. So he takes the pain so that you can be healthy to enjoy what he has provided. Am I teaching here? We are not show. Sure. We are not show. Sure. We are not show sure, sure men here. We are men. We are, we, are, we are people of God. And our focus is Christ. Yet as we focus on Christ, he takes care of our needs. Amen. So in case you are waiting for display and drama, you came to the wrong place. Here you will hear the word and you will be healed by the word. Say I hear you. Yeah. And we teach you how to get healed even when we are not there. So that tomorrow if we are not there and something comes on you, you know exactly what to do to be free. Because it's not about show, it's about you enjoying what redemption has provided. If I'm teaching good, shout a powerful amen. amen. Alright, so sickness is of the devil. I thought somebody would say that. Say it again. One more time. So knowing the scriptures does not automatically mean you are acting on it. Healing is good. Healing is proof that Jesus was anointed by God. Sickness is of the devil. Oh yes. There are times sickness can come because of carelessness. There are times sickness can come because you made a wrong choice. There are times sickness will come because you touch what you shouldn't have touched. And it hurts you. But it's not wrong to believe that 100% of sicknesses are from the devil. Irrespective of what natural excuse you have for it. Satan is the father of sickness and disease. It's almost easier for you to release your faith when you see sickness as from the devil. Sometimes our over explanation of why we are sick is unbelief. Unbelief. You know, I know, I know why I'm feeling like this. I didn't sleep well last night. I know why I'm feeling like this. I ate something I shouldn't have eaten. I know why I'm feeling like this. I know why I'm feeling like this. So you know why. You know why? And that way you also know why you cannot be healed, right? There's no reason why I should be sick. There's no reason. There is nothing that should be reason enough for you to tolerate sickness. No, there's nothing. Your body has been bought with a price. It is not free. It has been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Say with me, sickness is not allowed in my body. Can I hear you shout it like you know what you're talking about? Say, in the name of Jesus, I reject sickness, accommodation in my space. You may know the reasons, but it's better to say, if it, to say it's of the devil and confront it that way. Sickness is of the devil. And the devil is under your feet. At that instance, you are releasing your faith when you begin to say that. To establish that sickness is not of God. Sickness is of the devil. And then you can receive healing for it. The key thing there is, sickness is not of God. Amen? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So sickness is an oppression of the devil. Is an oppression of the devil. Sickness is not of God. Whatever it is called. High blood pressure. Sugar diabetes. Weakness in the body. Total weakness. You know, depression. All of them. Coronavirus. They are all from the devil. None of them is from God. The only part God has in it is to heal it. Because it is in healing it, he takes the glory. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Sleeping sickness is not of God. 
It's not of God. Where you sleep till you don't know where you are. You sleep everywhere. You sleep and forget yourself. It's not of God. No waking hours for you. When you should be walking, you are sleeping. When you should be sleeping, you are sleeping. <laughs> it's not of God. I'm talking to somebody right now. It's not of God. Bro, it's not normal. There is a time to walk while it is day. Even Jesus said walk while it is day. Not sleep while it is day. And sleep while it is night. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 4. <clears throat> God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles, signs, wonders, and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. According to his own will. So we see that in the gospel being preached, which is Jesus raised from the dead, a sign of it is that our bodies are being healed. If I was to measure faith, which is not a New Testament practice, if I was to measure it, which is not a New Testament practice, it takes more faith to be saved than to be healed. It takes more faith to be saved than to be healed, which means once you are saved, you are a candidate for healing. Once you are saved, the same faith that saved you is the same faith that heals you. Uh -huh. Jesus said in Luke chapter 5, which one is easier, whether to say your sins are forgiven you or to heal you of your body, but that you may know that it takes the same thing to do the two. I do not only forgive your sin, you take your mat. He didn't say, uh, he didn't say I have healed you. He said you take your mat. You take it. You take it. You have a part to play. It's not automatic. You, the same way I forgave your sins because you confessed me, the same way now I have healed you. So you take your mat and take possession of your healing. Take your mat and take. It's not based on your feeling. Even while that leg is still paining you, stretch it out. Take a step. It may be still be paining you. Move the leg. Why? You have been healed. That pain is temporal. The healing is permanent. And as you begin to exercise the permanent, the permanent will kick out the temporal. Who am I talking to in this building? So the first thing is, healing is a proof that Jesus has saved me from my sins. Healing is a proof that Jesus has saved me from my sins. Healing is proof that Jesus died for my sins. Secondly, this is almost the simplest, almost the simplest, and yet the one that is hardly practiced. Healing is the will of God. Healing is the will of God. I have not seen a single believer who says sickness is from God. I've never seen anybody say that. They may say God is using it to teach me a lesson. Okay? Because of ignorance. Okay? But they will never say sickness is the will of God. Nobody will say when you get healed, God is unhappy. Nobody will say that. Nobody will ever say, God is unhappy that you are healthy. On that simple basis, because healing is the will of God, it means that I can initiate healing anytime I need it. I initiate healing anytime I need it. Or anytime someone around me needs healing, I can help him to initiate it. Anytime someone around me needs healing, 
I can help him to initiate healing for his body. Hallelujah. Because faith begins where the will of God is known. So once you know that it is the will of God to heal, faith goes to work. Yeah. Faith does not act in a vacuum. Faith begins where the will of God is known. The second thing is, it's also easy, but hardly acted upon. Healing is the will of God. Can everybody say with me very loud, healing is the will of God for me. Let me hear you say it two more times. One more time. I didn't have a good amen. Somebody has just been healed of hormonal imbalance right now. Yeah, somebody has just been healed. Your hormones have been doing like that. And God just healed you right now. Just chocolate like Healing is the will of God for you. You cannot tell what the will of your earthly father is because your father can write his will and change it without your notice. And change it again. And change it again. And call his lawyer and change it again. You cannot easily tell what your father's will is. But you can always say the will of your heavenly father is to heal you. That one, you know, it's very clear. It's open. God never changes his mind on his will. And it's key to know that healing is the will of God for you. Look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. Next verse. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Which means that really it is established in God's word that healing is God's will. I will. It is my will. If Jesus is God, that means that healing is the will of God. I will be thou clean. We pray about the will of God for marriage, will of God for travel, will of God for life partner. There is one you must never pray about. Healing. Because it's clear. Healing is God's word for you, God's will for you, anytime, any day, anywhere. We said salvation is the will of God. Healing is also the will of God. It must be settled in your heart because where you have doubt, you cannot release your faith. There must not be a contrary opinion to the fact that healing is God's will expressly in your life. There is something about faith that never gives up. Even if someone is on medication, you don't stop medication. While you are taking the medication, receive your healing. You don't stop medication because you are walking by faith. Medication is part of the faith. So while you are taking the medication, receive your healing and act on your healing while taking the medication. Medication is not anti-God. Medication is anti-Satan. Because sometimes people can be funny. And it doesn't, it's not their fault. It's because of the kind of things they have been taught. Settle it in your heart. That healing is God's will for you now. When believing for healing, shut the door. Shut the door. And feed on God's word radically. Feed on God's word radically. Hear the word morning, afternoon, evening. In fact, sometimes hear the word twice in the morning. 
twice in the afternoon, twice in the evening. Then play the word through the night. Even when you are sleeping, let the word be playing. Because that is God's medicine. And God's medicine that is guaranteed. God's medicine that does not require trial and error. Feed on it steadily. Is Oretha Hagen, Kenneth Hagen's wife, was diagnosed of a heart disease. Heart disease. And she became so weak. So what she did, Kenneth Hagen looked at her and said to her, you know what to do. <laughs> You've been following me. You know what the word of God says. You know what to do. So do, do what you need to do. So the wife packed all of Kenneth Hagin's messages. Everything he has taught. While lying down on the bed weak. She began to play them. She began to play them. She began to play them. Kenneth Hagin says sometimes she'll be so weak. She can't even follow him to go and preach. He will go and preach alone. When he comes back she's feeding on the word. She played everything. Even the meetings where she was. She replayed them again. The ones she was not in. She kept playing them. Kept playing them. After about a month of feeding on the word or so. She went back to the doctors. They did a, ch a chest. I mean a check on her heart. And they said you have a brand new heart. How did it happen? You have a brand new heart. How did it happen? And you know what? She outlived Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin got tired. Slept. Left her here. You don't, you're not hearing me. Because God's word is no respecter of persons. God's word is God's medicine. God's word is God's medicine. Elijah prayed and kept telling the servant, go and check. The servant will say, I can't see anything. Go and check. The servant will say, I can't see anything. Go and check. Until the servant said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. He said, now quickly get home, for I hear a sound of abundance. Faith never gives up. Faith never gives up. You didn't hear that. Faith never gives up. Know it in your heart that healing is the will of God for you now. See, the Christian life is such that by the word of God, we don't give up on circumstances. As a believer, it is part of our culture. We never give up. We are diehard believers. When we believe, we believe for life. We believe forever. We are resilient. Listen to me, everybody. Learn to sing a victory song in the face of defeat. Yeah. When defeat is looking at you, start singing a song of victory. That's our faith. Our faith overcomes. Somebody shout, I hear you. Say it again. Healing is God's will for me now. In John chapter 9 verse 1 to 4, they said, who sinned? Jesus said, nobody. Nobody sinned. But that the works of God might be made manifest. The deeds of God. Sickness is not God's doing. Healing is God's doing. So, feed your heart on this truth well enough. Feed on it. So, number one is, healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Christ. Number two, healing is the will of God for you. Sickness can never be God's will. My body is God's target for healing. Somebody say that with me. My body. Say it very loud. My body. Say it again. My body. Is God's target. For healing. Say it again. My body. Is God's target. For healing. Kabayada. 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 In Luke 13, 16. A woman that was bent over. Whom Jesus said, lose her. Lose her, let her go. Ought not this woman, 
being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed on this Sabbath day. Ought not this woman, she was a daughter of Abraham. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. Today, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, you are loosed from every infirmity. Loosed from every infirmity. See, I'm a son of God. I am loosed from every infirmity. Infirmity is not of God. I am loosed from it right now. I thought I would hear a good amen. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed on this Sabbath day? So, your body, therefore, is the home of God's power. Your body is the headquarters of God's power. Your body is the home of God's power. That is, God's power dwells in your body. Please listen carefully. My body is mortal and frail. My body is mortal and frail. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit that raised us from the dead dwelleth in your mortal, your frail, your body is mortal. It has not become immortal. Immortality is the last part of redemption. So this body is frail. That's why it gets sick. That's why it gets weak. That's why it gets pained. That's why it develops disease. Because it is a frail body. You are not sick because you are a bad person. Mm -mm. You are not sick because your sins are too much. No. No. Don't let any preacher put you in prison. You are sick because your body is frail. Your body is mortality. Some days you sleep healthy, you wake up sick. <laughs> Some days you sleep sick, you wake up healed. Is that true? All of a sudden, a boil comes out of your mouth. All of a sudden, a boil grows in your tongue. From where you can't even talk. All kinds of funny. Satan is such a bastard. Very naughty fellow. You wake up in the morning. All of a sudden you can't walk well. Because of one pain here. So it makes you permanently to walk in a very funny way. Meanwhile you look for the pain. You can't find it. By the end of the day your leg is normal again. Mortality. Mortality. The body is frail. The body is mortal. Okay? Please listen carefully. So because your body is frail and mortal, that is why it becomes a candidate for God's power. Yeah. That's why it becomes a candidate for God's power. So say it with me very loud. My body is God's healing target. My body is mortal. Therefore, it becomes a candidate of God's power. I didn't hear a good amen. Don't excuse why your body is sick. Don't use my body is mortal. My body is mortal to register defeat for your body. Just say, my body is mortal. It's a candidate of God's power. Somebody said, well, the doctor showed me the fact. I saw the x-ray. I saw everything. Even in my body now, I can see the physical side. Hey, what about the greater facts of God's world? What about the greater facts? Don't strengthen natural facts by repeating them so often. This is my sickness. This is my high blood pressure. When it starts, I'll be confused. I'll just be confused. This is my high blood pressure. When it starts, it brings migraine headache. And then suddenly, I don't know bedroom from parlor. I don't know parlor from kitchen. Everything looks the same. It is my own. Don't worry. <laughs> Very soon, you even know yourself. Because it is your own. I cannot own sickness. I was not a shareholder in the manufacturing of sickness and disease. But I'm a partaker of divine nature. I am a partaker of God's power. God's power.
power is at work in my body 247. I thought somebody would say God's power is at work in my body 247. Glory to God. So healing is a sign of the redemptive work. Number two, healing is the will of God. Sickness can never be the will of God. All sickness is from the devil. Number three, my body is mortal. Therefore, it is a candidate of the healing power of God. Number four, a third part of the entire life of Jesus was about healing the sick. A third part of his entire life. Jesus had more healing miracles than any other miracle in the four gospels. Which means that if you ask for the totality of God's will on earth, healing is a third part of the will of God. If you look at the totality of God's power, a third part is healing. Healing is a miracle. Healing is a miracle. Healing is is a miracle. It means healing is not a feeling. Healing is a miracle. Which means healing is not a feeling. Stop checking your feelings to see whether you are healed. Healing is a miracle. Healing is a supernatural intervention of God's power. A miracle is the power of God working in your body. You ask somebody, how are you feeling? He says, I'm feeling better. No. No. If they ask you, how are you feeling? Say, I have my miracle. I have, I'm not feeling better because I'm not following my feelings. A miracle is not feeling. How are you feeling? I have my miracle. How are you feeling in your head now? The power of God is at work in my head. I am healed. How are you feeling in your waist? The power of God is working in my waist. I am healed. What about your sight? The power of God is at work in my eyes. I can see. Not to say, uh, I am getting better. Uh, good, better, best. So I am good. <laughs> good, better, best. I am at good. How are you now? Better, better, better. How are you? Better, better. <laughs> After one week, how are you now? Better, better, better. <laughs> you never reach best. You're walking by feelings. We walk by faith, not by sight. Teaching good? I said teaching good. There are times the power of God is not felt in the natural. You just say it. I believe I'm healed. Why? It is written. It is written. When we prayed, the power of God went into operation. The moment we pray. The moment I say, receive now. And you say, Amen. The power of God goes into operation. And within that operation is the miraculous. Within that, it's not in your feelings. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Miracle, I mean healing is a miracle, not an observation. Healing is a miracle, not an observation. There is nothing in the healing power of God... Nothing in the healing power of God that you are looking for feelings for. God's power is not feeling. Whether you feel it or not, it's at work once we pray. And please take this down. This will help you. There is nothing in the healing power of God that forbids you taking medication. I'm repeating it. Medication is not unbelief. You can use your medication and believe God's power is working. However, don't put your trust in medication. Don't put your trust in medication. 
Don't say because you believe God, you throw away your medication. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 12, 9, he calls it gifts of healings. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Put it up. To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, he calls it working of miracles. 12, 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Look at verse 30 of the same chapter. Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret miracles, the working of miracles. A miracle is simply means the power of God is active. The power of God is active. In John 14, 12, John chapter 14, verse number 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So healing is God's work. Healing is God's work. Healing is God's work. As a believer in the name of Jesus, I receive healing. Can I hear you say, I receive healing? Say, very loud, I receive healing. Say, healing is mine now. I didn't hear powerful, amen. In the name of Jesus, at the right hand of God, I have healing. And sometimes you keep speaking healing for days before it manifests. The name of Jesus is mine. The name of Jesus belongs to me. Healing in the name of Jesus is mine. You know, when it's crucial, shut your mind. Bypass your mind and keep speaking. Sometimes faith knows what to say. Sometimes you, have, you don't have to listen. Your mind is suggesting things, tell it to shut up. Speak what you know. Don't speak what you're thinking. Speak what you know. Bypass your mind. Make your mind a barbarian. When your mind is telling you how the doctor says that it will degenerate from stage one to stage two within one week. Then when stage two happens, your head and your body will be shaking like this. When your mind is imagining how you'll be shaking like that so that you can start practicing in your mind how to walk without people seeing it. The moment your mind is trying to do that, bypass your mind. Again, mananga, koroto, soke, nemengle, nema, lebrada, gagalaba. You have rendered your mind. Huh? You have rendered your mind. You have rendered your mind totally inoperative. You have made your mind to become stupid because nobody's listening to it. So it will shut up. Then when you are an angle in him, he said, nothing is degenerating in my body. Every part of my body is healthy, strong, and well. I am not going to depreciate in any form. Jesus paid for this body and the power of God is at work in this body. I'll be strong and healthy until I fulfill God's purpose for my life on the earth. No deficiency. Only efficiency. Somebody shout, I hear you. Somebody shout, I hear you. We stand in faith together. A miracle is not feeling. A miracle is what you believe God for. Say with me, I believe in miracles. I, believe I didn't hear you. I Can I hear you say it intentionally five times? One, two, go. I two. I three. I four. I five. I now say, I receive a miracle now. In Jesus' name. The power of God is working in my body right now. I rebuke sickle cell anemia. I don't know who is that person that has been struggling with sickle cell anemia and has been threatening you and you are beginning to be afraid of dying any moment now. That sickle cell anemia is rebuked and healing flows into your body right now. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Mashataladaba. I receive a miracle right now. What about you? Number five. Healing is a prayer point. Healing is a reason why we pray. 
Healing is a prayer point. And if it's a prayer point, it means it enforces the will of God. If somebody is sick, that is not when to pray the Pauline prayers. <laughs> when somebody is sick, that is not when to pray the Pauline prayers. I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of your calling. I pray that you walk worthy of... Hey, stop that! Sick body, be healed. Infirmity, out, 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 out! Oh yeah, do what you couldn't do before. This thing is the violent, take it by force. That's not when to be apologetic. You are not the healer. Jesus is the healer and he has healed. And you are with the receiver. So your job is to make the receiver collect it. Say I hear you. Say I receive. Say I katalambano. That's not the time to, to, to be play, praying the uh, efficient prayers. Eh? That you may know the hope of your calling. The man is not looking for calling. <laughs> the man is looking for healing. Body be healed. Say, I hear you. That's when to exercise authority. That's not when to pray to the father. Father, father. Uh -uh. If father has to come, what is, of what use are you? Of what use are you here? Ambassador of Christ. Of what use are you here? A believer with signs following. You don't pray for God to come down. You command the body be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, do what you couldn't do before. Even before Jesus died, Elijah told Nehemiah, Nehemiah, jump in the river seven times. He didn't even pray about it. Go, go, go jump seven times. That's the end. And Nehemiah was dancing around. The PA to demon on such issues said, huh, You are the one with leprosy. <laughs> you know, today there are PAs for many things, so that one is such issues. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the, oh God. Now you get leprosy. The man that told you to jump doesn't have it. You are the one, sir. I promise you, I will not tell anybody. Let's go together. I'll be counting while you're jumping. One. <laughs> Do <laughs> at the seventh time leprosy disappeared. So that jumping was an act of releasing faith to receive. There's always something to do. When we say do something, it is in doing that you did receive it. Did you hear that? As long as I look at you're not receiving anything. Do something, say, uh -huh. do something, say, uh -huh. Come back tomorrow for more teaching. <laughs> you are, uh, uh, means you have not had anything. <laughs> That's why we are here for the whole week. So that those that are here today, we are here tomorrow. If you are not here tomorrow, you are here next tomorrow. No matter what, you must hear before Saturday. <laughs> you must hear it. <laughs> you must hear it. So you can enjoy sound health and do the work of God. None of us in this church is permitted to be sick. You'll be healthy and strong. And we will preach this gospel together. Can I hear a better amen than that? So number five. Healing is a prayer point. James 5, 13. James, as a roundup, James chapter 5, verse 13. Oh God. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Next verse. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now watch what will happen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Observe. He will be healed first before the sins are forgiven. Which means sin cannot be a barrier to healing. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up first. Then if he has committed sin, it shall be forgiven. 
It is not repent first before I pray. No, that's not the gospel. What do you want? Healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now that you are healed. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. There's something better than healing. It's eternity. Then you pray for the person to receive the forgiveness of sins. It's not that I have before I pray for you. you. See, you are still smoking. The prayer of a sinner is anger to God. <laughs> before we pray, you have to throw away your cigar and repent. No. You can even be smoking. You want healing? Okay. Pull it first before I pray. Okay. Okay, so close your eye now. Cigar cannot stop the power of God. If the grave could not stop the power, is this cigar? Uh, cigar cannot stop God's power. Somebody shout, I hear you. All the people Jesus healed, were they not sinners? All of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the people he healed were sinners. Yet, he didn't tell them, repent first. What do you want? Sight. Take. What do you want? To walk. Stand up. Take your mat. He never told them, repent first. No. It is his goodness that will lead them to repentance. If I'm preaching, go shout, I hear you. There's no reason why you cannot be healed. So in other words, I can call on brethren to pray for me. You pray, I believe, I receive. I pray, you believe, you receive. Therefore, healing is a prayer point. I can ask to be prayed for to be healed. Number six, healing is both in the Old and New Testament. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth thine iniquities, who healeth thy diseases. So healing both in the Old and the New Testament is the will of God. Hezekiah was healed of his sickness. In Genesis 12, Abimelech was healed with his family. Both in the Old and New Testament. Finally, healing can be ministered and healing can be received. Healing can be ministered and healing can be received. Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Healing can be received. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely you give. Healing is God's will for you. It's a sign of Jesus' redemptive work. It can be ministered and it can be received. Sickness is not the will of God for you. I need you to settle that in your heart. Say with me very loud, everybody. Sickness is not the will of God for me. So right now, I receive healing and I walk out of every sickness. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Stand on your feet. I want to pray for you. Yeah, da, da, da. You're listening to me on radio. You're watching on television. You're watching on social media. It's time for miracles and healings. Lift up your right hand to heaven, everybody. If you're standing, stand quickly. Let's do this. Lift up your right hand to heaven, up, down, everywhere. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, say with me, in the name of Jesus, I settle it in my heart that sickness is never the will of God for me. I reject every symptom, every pain, and every disease. My body is a candidate for the healing power of God. Healing is a miracle. It's not a feeling. It's not an observation. Healing is a miracle. So I believe God for it. I receive a miracle of healing for my body. Right now, I release my faith. I release my faith for miracles. I release my faith for healing. I release my faith right now and I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive in Jesus' name. And every believer says that amen on a note of final letter. Place your right hand wherever you have sickness, pain, disease, 
whatever is bothering you, place your right hand. We're going to have this miracles right now, like you have this mangoes from a mango tree. Going to have this miracles all over this place all over. Place your hand where that pain or sickness or disease is as we pray. Those watching on television, place your hand on the disease. Those watching on social media, place your hand wherever that disease is on your body. And those listening on radio, place your hand where that disease is. And as I pray, I want to hear your amens like thunder and get ready right now to walk out of that sickness. Get ready right now to do what you couldn't do before. In the name of Jesus every disease every pain every discomfort every diagnosis and prognosis everything that oppresses your health everything that makes life uncomfortable and unbearable in your body in the name of jesus be flushed out be flushed out be flushed out be flushed out whatever my father has not planted shall be rooted out I command blood disease flush out sugar diabetes flush out high blood pressure flush out pain in the body flush out skin disease flush out flush out flush out hearing conditions be corrected be corrected be corrected sight problems be healed sight be corrected sight be restored be restored be restored in the name of Jesus. God's healing power is moving in your body now. From your head to the soles of your foot. That's the power. That's the power. That's the power. That's the power. Every hold of oppression. Every hold of oppression. Infirmity. Oppression of the enemy. Lose your holds and come out in the name of Jesus. Body be healed. Body be healed now we are declare where you need a creative miracle in your organs, in your body, in your members Zakatakana receive a creative miracle receive it receive it receive a curative miracle in the name of Jesus thank you Father now lift your hands and begin to give him thanks just begin to give him thanks Open your mouth and begin to give him thanks. Begin to give God thanks. Begin to give God praise. I'm not hearing your voices. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Oh, Jakala da Babas. Oh, Jakala da Babas. Oh, Lord of Baba Baba. It's happening all over the place. Thank you, Lord. It's yours. Healed completely. Totally set free. Now quickly begin to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't bend, bend. If you couldn't move, move. Check that part of your body again. Check it. The pain is gone. That, that limitation is gone. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't see well before and you believe for a healing of your eyes, Grab a Bible or a book and read now. Do something. If you couldn't hear with one side of your ear, block the other one and check the other one. It's open right now. It's open right now. If you couldn't bend your neck, bend it. What you couldn't do, just do it right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to praise God and just celebrate miracles and healings in this place. If you know it is done, can I have a powerful amen? Now go ahead and let's celebrate. Make some noise. Bend, shout. Do something crazy. Move your leg. Move your body. Do something. Do something. Move your body. Go ahead. Move your body. Check yourself. Go ahead and celebrate. 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 Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lift your hand and shout. Healing is mine right now. I have healing walking in my body right now. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Are you blessed? 
Now listen, if you are listening on radio, there's a phone number to call quickly. Once you confirm you have a miracle, once you confirm you have a testimony, you can call this number right now and share with us your miracle or your testimony. Plus 234-8032-756-104. I repeat, plus 234-803-275. 6104 last time plus 234-803-275-6104 that's the line to call and share with us what God is doing with you right now wherever you're listening to the sound of my voice those watching online a miracle has just happened send us an email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and all over the building here once you confirm a miracle has happened to you right Right now in this service, just find your way to the to the front side here. Dr. Gabriel, I need you that side. Dr. Gabriel is waiting for you. Just walk to him. Tell him what happened to you in the course of the service. Once you confirm, you've checked yourself, a miracle has happened to you. Just walk to him quietly. Tell him exactly what God has done for you in this service. Up, down, back, front, everywhere. Once you just check yourself and confirm a miracle has happened to you, just walk to him. He's waiting for you right now. Can somebody shout a powerful amen? amen. Now listen to me, while we're confirming all the miracles and healings quickly all over the place, I'm going to ask you to get your offerings. We're going to give and rejoice and celebrate. We're going to give and rejoice and celebrate right now in honor of God's word. Every time we receive the word of God, it's an opportunity to honor the word of God with our offerings. Your honor offering, it's a way of showing responsibility for the work of Christ on the earth. I am responsible for the advancement of the kingdom. I am responsible to push this gospel to the ends of the earth. There are people all over the world that do not have the opportunity. Through my giving, the gospel will reach wherever these people are. So you have your offerings. I'd like you to package it. If you're watching online, the banking details are scrolling. And those of you who want to partner with us, you want to partner with this ministry and help us do more for the kingdom, all you need to do is shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Lift up your offerings. We want to pray over them. Online, make sure you're sending your offerings too right now online. And all our campuses everywhere. This is the honor offering. And we want you to honor the word and honor the ministry of the word that comes to you through this house. Lift up your offerings, Father. We rejoice that we receive right now. We receive right now every need met in this building, every desire granted. And above all, we receive a miracle of opportunities for your people, ideas, concepts, and insights. And we decree that this week is a week of celebrating the goodness of God. So I declare that as we give, we give in faith, we give with joy, and we rejoice by faith that what you have done for us here today is permanent. Thank you for your word. And we decree that through this house, this gospel reaches the ends of the earth. Thank you for the blessing upon your people. And I declare right now that as you give this morning, every grace that you require, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have in all sufficiency. You abound unto every good work. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Now listen to me, social media community, we're signing you off. Television, we're signing you off. Radio, we're signing you off. But we expect to get your calls and hear your testimonies. And remember, remember, tomorrow at 9 a.m., and this is for the radio audience in Aquaibom, tomorrow 9 a.m., we'll be here to counsel and pray for the sick. So if you have sick people, bring them at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll be here to counsel and pray for the sick. Then tomorrow evening, we have another service where we're going to minister to the sick. If you have sick people, you know, even if they're in their hospitals and they're willing to come for prayer, you can bring them. If they can't come, get the, the radio to them, get the device of your Facebook to them. This week, we are standing on the audacity of God's word to agree with you for your healing and miracles to be made manifest. Online community, help us spread the good news and get more people to hook up tomorrow. It's every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. 
We love you guys. Always an honor to have all of you connected to this house of grace where we serve you the grace of God. We look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. And don't forget our social media campaign is aggressively on. So when we shoot out those short, short videos, help us share them. Help us drop them all over the world. We are on an aggressive campaign of bringing men to the knowledge of the truth. Looking forward to being with all of you tomorrow at this 6 p.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Hit it, let's do it as we celebrate and all over the building. Your offerings anywhere on the pulpit as we celebrate. 9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com Is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity if you don't need healing someone around you definitely might need it this is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's Word for healing don't forget God's Word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service 8 a.m. and second service 11 a.m. GMT plus one and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 p.m. Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 p.m. To 10 p.m. Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino, and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Aquaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. Thanks uh, for staying tuned to us, and then we just uh, take you straight into the second leg of the program. Before we do that, though, let's just join our radio audience by giving them the, you know, Announcements, you're always waiting for this part of the program. Bank details, account name remains Power City International. There are three banks, of course. There is FCMB, there is Zenith, there's UBA. So I'm going to start on this edition with UBA. 139-26-465. 139-26-465. The account name is Power City International. The same account name for FCMB, 29-82-68-2028. 29, 82, 68, 20, 28. 
And uh, that's for FCMB for Zenith, the last bank on this edition of the program, certainly not the least, is 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, Power City International, that's the account name. And for sponsorship, you just need to support what we're doing here so that many more people across the world can avail themselves of it. The number to call is plus 234-803-275-6104. And you email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Of course, that is, uh, Dr. There is DR, simply. Okay, my name is Michael Bush. Global Baba is here, and is Dr. Abel Damina. It's for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> they waited for all. Then they clapped for all of oh, us. Oh, no. The Intercontinental, so, Mr. Global Bush, so, so good nice to see you, you again today. Global Baba. You're looking, you're looking Christmas. Yes, yeah, sure. Looking good. Global Baba. You're tempting me. Global Baba. But I'm not going to fall into it. Global Baba. Global Baba. <laughs> um, okay, let's just set the stage. Uh, we don't have time, so... Let's just do what we always do before I come back for my traditional opening questions. Let's pray for our Kwaibum. Let's pray for our government, our people. Let's pray for Nigeria, our government, our people. Let's pray for our world. Father, we rejoice that we have access, access undeniable. And our prayers are guaranteed answers. So we thank you for Kwaibum State, the governor, his executive council, all the public and civil servants who keep serving this state. We decree that, Lord, your grace and mercy continues to abound in their direction. They lack nothing. They have everything supplied them. And above all, the revelation of Jesus overtakes their hearts and minds. The fullness of God finds expression in their beings in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray for our world that the gospel continues to thrive. Laborers and harvesters are released into every nation, every continent, every community, every society, every village. We declare that laborers are released to go forth and preach the gospel of Christ in his clarity. And we thank you, Lord, for the blessing upon our world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Global Baba. The Intercontinental. Um, a couple of uh, questions just to set the stage. Then we okay. go looking at some great entries that we have. We have so many entries from around the world. And number one would be about you. Today you dropped another one when you said, uh, ye are gods. Yes. It's for idols. Yes, it's for idols. How can that be? Idols, so we have been idols all along. Judges. We are not. That's why there's no scripture that calls us gods. But we, we have been claiming that. No, people have been claiming that because of ignorance. I used to many years ago. But when I saw the truth, I stayed away from it. Oh, you too it. used to use it. I used to. Okay, so there's hope. I used no, to. Baba. But, but when I saw that the New Testament calls us new creations. Mm. It calls us sons of God. It calls us heirs of Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. You know, all of those are the, are the adjectives used to describe a child of God, not yeah. uh, gods or all of that. Okay, Global Bar, so you, you come here, you, 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 you address the world every day. Yes. And you're always dropping um, something to take home here and there. Yes. And then you just sit there as you sit now, like somebody who knows nothing, who is doing nothing. How does Mama Rachel see you? How do your children, your biological ch children, how do they see you? How do they relate with you? Like some dangerous being or no, somebody? No, no, no. They relate with me like their father, like a human being. Okay. They know where to draw the lines. Oh, their lines? Yeah, their lines. Oh. They know when I'm speaking to them as a man of God. And they receive it from a man of God. And they know when I'm speaking to them like their father. And she knows when I'm talking to her like her husband. And she knows when I'm speaking to her like her man of God. So that's why I pray for them and they have answers like that. Because okay. they honor and receive me as a prophet. They receive me as their man of God. And they also know when it's time to play, when it's time to be father, when it's time to be husband at home. And at that time, I'm no more the man of God, so they can scratch my head, oh. they can push my leg. Okay, uh, so, so Global Baba, um, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus talking, yes, Jesus talking with some of his disciples, so his disciples said, who do the people uh, say I am? And they went on, who do you say I am? And um, who do they think you are? Well, they know I'm their father and they know I'm a man of God. Whenever they need a miracle, they, 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 come, they just say, daddy, this has to happen. But, and they know that if I declare it to happen. But Glory Baba, who do you see yourself as? I see myself as a child of God. I see myself as a man of God. I see myself as... Um, a servant of God that has been graced by God 
to share with the world the message of Christ and to be a blessing to the world. Okay, Global Baba, my last question. My last question, and for me it's deep. It's a, it's a, it's a question that I would really would like you to feel. Um, there's a guy, there's a man. He's called Mr. Anyepen Um When I set out on my radio trip, I drew a lot of inspiration from one of his programs. So one, his main program, his only program, and that was Something to Remember. That's how they called it. Where he would just bring facts from around the world. He would tell you things that happened there. And we don't know how he got those things. Now, it's the same temptation that I face to ask you, where do you get all these things that you, you teach? They are called revelation knowledge. From a book? From the word of God. From the Bible that we also have? Yes, the same Bible. Okay. You know, I was preaching for, for, for one of my friends in Lagos, mm. and I don't like calling names. Mm. So a lot of pastors were sitting in front, on the front row. A lot of pastors. As I began to preach and the word of God came alive, I just discovered that they were dropping their Bibles on the pulpit. They were throwing their Bibles on the pulpit. So after the service, I was asking Pastor Philemon, who was with me on that trip, I said, why were they dropping their Bibles? He said, the pastors at a point said, they've been carrying this Bible all their lives and they didn't see what you were teaching. It must be Tokumbo. So they were throwing it away. <laughs> it's the same Bible. That's why Paul says the eyes of your understanding is a prayer has to be enlightened because there are depths. It's called the unsearchable riches of Christ. Is there in the word? Have you encountered somebody who, another pastor, who teaches like as you do? Yes, there are quite a number of them around the world. In Nigeria? Yes, even in Nigeria. Oh, you have also met people like oh, you? sure. You sit down and they, they, they teach. They bless me real good. Oh, yes. Okay. So there. There, there must be hope. Right? Oh, there is a lot there of must hope. Be hope. There yeah. is. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we spent last night um, in the southeastern part of Asia. That was in Vietnam. Yeah. So we survived it. I, I told you we'll be fine. We survived it. Yes. Vietnam. Yes. Okay. So it, have, it will be good we host ask your counselor there one day. Vietnam. Yes. Global <laughs> Baba. Okay. Okay, so we have two anonymous entries from there before we go to other parts of Asia. So this one says, please, sir, can I marry a lady who's older than me, maybe one or two years difference? Please advise me. Oh, sure. Even five years. There's nothing wrong. Because you see, when it comes to marriage, what you're looking at is mental maturity, emotional maturity, spiritual maturity, and physical maturity. So once the person you're getting married to, even if the lady is younger than you or older than you, once two of you have the ability to reason together, your minds are developed at a point where you see eye to eye. And, you know, you're, 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 you can communicate. You can I interface with each other very well. Uh, that's all that is needed, you know, because biological age is just calendar. The real development is the maturity of the mind, the maturity of the body, and the maturity of the biggest of all, of the spirit of a man. So sure. Now from Asia, we're flying all the way to the Americas, the United States. Be nice. Hello, Global Baba and Dr. Bush. Doctor, Dr. Bush. Okay, sounds great. Prophet Bush. Aha. Uh -huh. Dr. Pastor okay. Bush. Prophet Dr. William Samuel. Sir Bush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, hello, Global Baba. I am calling. I write, uh, I currently live in the U.S. I'm a follower of your messages and ministry. I have a question. On the message preached on Facebook on the 1st of uh, December, that cannot be, the 1st of January, on the 31st of January 2021, when you said God doesn't get angry for the reason being that God or draft is a manifestation of the flesh and God has never manifested in the flesh, can you please explain to me from the following scriptures that talks about the anger of God and how God became flesh, Psalm 7, 11, it goes on and on. Well, you must understand the word flesh. The word flesh is not the word flesh. Flesh is flesh, even though flesh is not flesh. So flesh is, there's no omnibus application to that word. There's a place where flesh is a way of thinking. There's another place where flesh is a human body. So you must be able to understand the different usage of the word flesh. That will help you understand what you're asking. Okay, so from the Americas, we're flying into Africa. Yes, we're flying into Africa, Cameroon. Hello, sir. I'm from Cameroon. Doesn't leave a name. It says it's been just one month that I got to know you, and since then I've been glued to your messages. My question, how do I get to study the Bible because my mind has been so messed up with so much confusion? 
I've grown up in religion all my life, and your teachings have been so contrary to all I know. Sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy in my head. I don't even know how to study anymore. Second question, can I, as a child of God, go wrong in life? Can I make mistakes in marriage? Because the Bible tells me that my steps are ordered by him. My first caller, hello. Welcome to the program. Your name, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Cameroon. Cameroon? Uh, this is Pastor Dixon. Pastor Dixon, what part of Cameroon are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Southwest. Okay, Southwest province. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. More grace, sir. Thank you. I want you to speak for my ministry, sir. Okay. Okay, want me to pray for you. Father, we decree that your son continues to abound in grace, utterance, boldness, ability to speak God's word without compromise. You're strengthened with might by the Spirit. Receive boldness to declare the testimony of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we go back to Cameroon. He's just calling from Cameroon, so. Yep. All right, so um, I'm just trying to put back together what the person... You know, can you make mistakes in marriage? Because the Bible tells that the steps are ordered by him. All right, so. okay. Okay, I understand. Can it so, go wrong? So now the first thing you said is you just got started listening to my messages mm. about a month ago, and it's like you're confused. So it's normal. It's normal for you to get confused, to even begin to doubt everything. So this is what you should do. I'll encourage you not to try right now to study your Bible. Right now, don't try to study your Bible. What you should rather do is study with me. Order for my teaching series. The first one that will help you fundamentally is the old and the new covenant in Christ. The old and the new covenant in Christ. It's about 36 hours. It gives you a general overview of the whole Bible. It will help you a lot. So you start from there and study with me. As I teach you, go through the scriptures. That's how to study. That's the first one. Secondly, can you make mistakes in life? Yeah, you, you can make mistakes in life. For many reasons. Number one, God doesn't make choices for you. But God gives you advice on what choices to make. Number two, God does not influence your decisions. He allows you to make your decisions and live with the consequences of your decisions. So therefore, that is why the Bible says, receive counsel that you may be wise at your latter end. That's what the Bible says, in the multitude of counsel there is safety. So when we teach you the word of God, what we are giving you is sound counsel. For example, in marriage, I have a book that will do you good if you can order for it, understanding relationships, marriage, and family life. And there are a lot of information on it, in it on how to choose a life partner, how to locate a life partner, and all of that. That information will be very useful and very, very much a blessing to you. Bless you. Okay, Global Baba will stay on in Cameroon, but I understand the producer would like us to take a couple of questions from the live audience. Are we set? Well, if you have a question, I'll just take that. In a moment, but Cameroon Dwala, that's where we're heading, says, Greetings, Global Baba, greetings, the boss. Bless you for all the labor in feeding the Lord's sheep. I'm Kipsi Bless, Ella from Dwala, in Littoral Province, in the Republic of Cameroon. Daddy, according to what you taught us about angels, they are ministering spirits for those who are heirs of salvation and that we shall judge angels. By implication, man is superior to angels. What then, Global Baba, did Jesus mean in Matthew 13, 49 to 50, when he explained the parable, when he said angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous at the end? Trust the Baba. Clarify, please. Well, remember that parables were a form of communicating with people who could not understand revelation. That, in, that in, informs why Jesus will use all of this kind of, of, of you know, speaking method to communicate. What you are simply saying in that parable is that angels will be used as servants in the, in the bringing in of the harvest at the end of time. That's what he meant. It's not like angels are superior to us. They will be used to serve, to work in putting together the harvest at the end of time. That's what Jesus was saying. From Cameroon, we're heading to Lesetho. says, hello, Global Baba. I'm writing this mail from Lesetho. My name uh, should be my name is... Leloko Motebe, my question is, after the cross, Jesus spent some time teaching his disciples. Did he, during the 40-day period, Global Baba, teach the same message he preached before the cross? No, he didn't teach the same thing he preached before the cross. After the cross, after he rose from the dead, he, he, he preached revelation knowledge. Before he died, he spoke in parables. There's a difference between parables and revelation knowledge. 
All right. If you order the In Christ Realities of Season 2, it deals with all of Jesus' teaching ministry before he rose from the dead. Okay, so the second question from Leloko Motebe is, uh, I want to know, Global Baba, I want to get some clarity on the kingdom of heaven on the one hand, and on the other, the kingdom of God. I often read, Global Baba, Jesus telling the multitudes that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Are these two phrases the same? Thank you very much. Yeah, they are the same. They are interchangeably used. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. To South Africa next, just as I wait to take my live uh, audience, my first question from the live audience. But South Africa, greetings, Global Baba. I'm married in community of property to my caring wife who is from outside South Africa. Now we want to buy a property in South Africa, but the bank wants us to raise 50%, which we don't have. We are both working, but our salary is too small to be up to 50%. So I'm thinking of a prenup marriage or, div or to divorce her and marry her again after buying the property. Please advise. <laughs> no, Baba. This is trouble. <laughs> he wants to divorce her. And marry her again. Because and they, buy the I, property first. I think there's, some, there's something they do in the, uh, that part of the, the, the country, you know, that allows those kind of things. That's dishonest. They're yeah, very dishonest. Uh, Don't do that. Don't do that. Be patient. Keep patiently walking until you get the money. It's more honorable for you. Bless you. Okay. I, I thought we were ready, but uh, from South Africa, let's stay on in South Africa. Hello, Dr. Damina. I'm Bongo Kule Nzongo. Please kindly assist me here. I was reading John 1, 18, using the Passion Translation, when we see that Jesus has unfolded God to us. Then the translator used the Greek word, oh my God. Uh, Global Baba, you need to look at this by yourself. I can't pronounce that. Exegomai. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay, global bar. I'm making progress. Yeah, very much. Exegomai. Very okay. much. When I checked the meaning, I discovered he made a mistake. It should be Exegomai, you know, Exegomai instead. Please kindly assist me. I don't know. I, I don't know what it means by the people made a mistake, but mm. what you do next time is write what they wrote, write what you saw, and, and the, the meanings. Because sometimes in the Greek, in the Greek, like, for example, there's a word called diharmonia. Then it is also called harmonia. It is also called harmonetics. See that? So um, sometimes that's why, again, the Greek Bible or the Greek translation is not like street. You just look at a word. That, no, it, you have to study the words to be able to arrive at what their meanings are. So my advice, you know, look at it again very carefully. And uh, if you're still confused, send another mail, but give me more details and I'll be able to help you. Okay, so from South Africa, we're heading next to Namibia. First, though, our first life question. Hello, your name? Okay. My name is Nicholas. Good evening, Papa. Bless you, Nicholas. Uh, from the uh, gospel, you made us to understand that, uh, or the Bible made us to understand that Jesus spoke basically with parables when he was talking to them. Yes. Then in Luke 24, when you were teaching yesterday, the people acknowledge that their heart was burning when Jesus was teaching. Yes. So my question is, was Jesus speaking in parables to them when their heart burned or revelational knowledge started at that point? Because he has risen from the dead. So that was revelation knowledge from Luke 24. And that was what he taught for 40 days after resurrection that opened them up to the reality of the scriptures where their hearts were opened. So it was revelation knowledge. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bless you. Okay, I'll take another in a moment, but first though, I head back to Namibia. Greetings, Global Baba. I'm Tangini Bashoka. I reach out to you from Namibia, Lodirist town. I'm urging for you, Global Baba, to please pray for me concerning my spiritual as well as physical life. Really, I need total deliverance so that I may be restored both bodily and emotionally. I'm also begging for the prophet of God to pray for me so I may get a permanent job. May he also pray on my behalf for the forgiveness of my sins and if strength in my faith and to increase in the knowledge of God's word. May the apostle also pray for my wife so she also could get a permanent job and the offspring of our wishes. The great apostle, I appreciate all of your time, patience, and efforts in this matter. It's an honor to meet you. Thank you, apostle. Amen. Father, we declare a release right now, supernatural, a visitation, and every desire of yours granted, barriers terminated. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And above all that, the revelation of God's word grows big on your inside. The reality of Christ. Take hold of your heart. 
and that eternal life becomes yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Another question from the live audience. Hello, ma'am. Okay, my name is Dr. Zekpayong, and I have two questions. First and foremost, I'm really excited being here. On Sunday was my official time listening to Pastor Ebel Damina. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, my first, thank you, church. My first question is about the right way to pray. I come from an Orthodox church, and the church, sorry to say, but I'm really not comfortable with a lot of things they do. The right way to pray, I want to know if our Father, that's the Lord's prayer, is a prayer that we should actually be praying. And the second question is about telling people God bless you or telling them more grace. To me, I feel it's a cliche that doesn't sit well. So I want to know your response to that. Thank you so much. Well, Dockers, welcome to Power City. We're glad to have you in church. And get ready, get ready. Get ready to learn so much, so much, so much. And I'm sure you will be very, very, very built up and blessed. Now, the first question you ask is not a prayer. What they call the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 is not a prayer. It was Jesus teaching on the character of God. And they just assume, people just assume it was a prayer. For example, Jesus said to them, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right? So he now begins to talk about the realities. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, uh, you know, and all of that. Now what Jesus was teaching was the character of God. You'll find out that he said something like, You forgive us our sins as we forgive others. So the character of God is that he forgives us even when we don't deserve forgiveness. So when we learn from him how he forgives, we also will forgive other people the same way. He says, you lead not us not into temptation. You deliver us from the evil one. It's not a prayer. It is a manifestation or a teaching of the character of God. So how do we pray in the New Testament? We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And what do we say? There are samples of prayers given to us as New Testament believers in Ephesians chapter 1, 15, 16, 17, 18 to 23, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. All those are prayers a believer can pray for himself. The eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know the, the hope of my calling, that I may know the riches of my inheritance, that I may know the exceeding greatness of his power towards me who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So there are prayers like that for you in the New Testament that reflects your true identity and reflects your true appetite as a child of God to grow in the knowledge of Christ. What about God bless you, uh, be blessed, and all of that? Well, again, God bless you, there's nothing wrong in asking for God's blessings because God's blessings are two ways. First of all, the blessings that a believer has in Christ Jesus, and you can wish somebody well by telling the person, God bless you, meaning as you go out today in your personal endeavors, experience the blessing. So, you know, that's why such um, such statements are used within brethren and within the household of God. Be blessed. God bless you, you know, and all of that. Brother Paul said, I am sure that when I come, I will come in the fullness of the blessing. So when we preach to you, what we're giving you is the blessing. So it's still part of it. Bless you. I hope that helps you a little bit. Okay. Global, but quickly, quickly, uh -oh. from Namibia, we're coming down to... Nigeria, and we're taking straight to you. We're flying straight into Victor Ata International Airport. While we're trying to disembark Lubo Baba, there is another live question from the live audience. It's not a dead question. Hello. My name is Becky. I had this question concerning willful sin from a friend. We're trying to share the, the gospel together. Hebrews 10. Yeah, Hebrews 10, 26. And uh, uh, the friend said that any real full sin is punishable. So, and when I was trying to explain, he now gave other scriptures to back it up. So I have been having a mind to ask, is willful, willful sin punishable? Once somebody starts backing scripture, he's doing an immoral activity. We don't back scripture, we explain scripture. So... Hebrews chapter 10, 26 
Talking about willful sin there. Is there any sin that is not willful? All sins are willful. There is no sin you commit that you didn't think of. But when he talked about willful sin in Hebrews 10, he was talking about unbelief. He was talking about not believing the gospel, not accepting the gospel of Christ. And when the gospel is preached and you have seen that all Christ has done for you and you say no, that rejection of the gospel is what is called willful sin, which will bring punishment on the adversary. An adversary is one who opposes the gospel. So that's what it means by willful sin. All your sins have been paid for by Christ. And God is not holding anybody accountable for sin on earth. The only sin that you are held accountable for is the rejection of Christ. Outside of that, no other sin. However, the fact that Christ has forgiven you all your sins in Christ does not mean there are no consequences. There are natural consequences. If you do not protect yourself and love yourself enough to create boundaries, there are things you will do. For example, you steal your coat. If it is in northern Nigeria, they will remove the hand. You will have half hand. If it's in the south, you will go to prison. Even when you are in prison, God will still be with you in prison because God has no problem with you. It is government and men that have problem with you. So it's consequences that go along with certain choices and sinful acts that we commit. But with God, the blood of Jesus has taken care of all our sins. Okay. Okay. So we we're back and um, we are the Victor Ta International Airport. So let's just take this one. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Bush. Thank you for all you do for us. I earlier sent a mail, Global Baba, seeking counsel on how to deal with depression, low self esteem, and inferiority complex. But sadly, I probably missed your reply on this and haven't been able to identify which edition it was answered on which edition it was answered i kindly request that you please give me your counsel on this again as i'm following steadily during this conference god bless you amen depression That's inferiority com complex and cowardice you are a victim of identity crisis so what do you do sit on the diet of christ when you see christ in christ you will see who you are and once that reality dawns on you all those things will jump out through the window so what series do you listen to to get free from that? The Father and His Family. Order for the Father and His Family. It's a teaching series. Bless you. Okay, that was from Praise. And uh, somehow, Global Baba, we must um, just round it off at this point. Tomorrow is another day. My name is Michael Bush, complete with the production team. And of course, all join me to thank you. And the moment is here for Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, to take us home. Then the Continental, Mr. Bush, it's been a great day today. So good to have all of you. Remember, we're live tonight, 9 to 10 o'clock on Inspiration FM, uh, 10 to 12 on Heritage. Tomorrow morning, 5.45 on XLFM, 11 to 1 on Radio Aquaibom, 1 to 3 XLFM, 3 to 5, you know your FM. And we're back at 6 p.m. again in Comfort FM, bringing you the truth of God's word. We love you guys and everybody in the audience. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen.